Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter six is test course class. All right, so design a test course class that has fields to hold three test scores. The class should have a constructor, accessor, and mutator methods for the test scores for, for the test score field, and a method that returns the average of the test scores. Demonstrate the class by writing a separate program that creates an instance of the class. The program should ask the user to enter three test scores, which are stored in the test scores object. Then the Project, uh, sorry, then the program should display the average of the test scores as reported by the test scores object. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create a test scores class. It's going to hold, it have, it's going to have fields for three test scores, and then it's going to have a method that's going to basically calculate the average of the three test scores. And then we're going to write a separate program that's going to test that class. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to create two files. One file is going to hold the class itself. And then the other file is going to be the program that's going to test the class. So as long as those two files are in the same location, in the same folder or something, they should be able to see each other. Once you compile it, they should be able to work with each other. No problems. As long as they're in the same location. So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to start by first creating the class, the test course class. So let's go, go ahead and create the test course class. I'm, I'm going to start with a key um, word public and then the name of the class, um, actually public class first and then the name of the class which is going to be test scores so public class test scores it's going to be public because we want this class available to code outside of this class all right so let's start with the fields of these class it says design a test course class that has fields to hold three test scores right so let's go ahead and create this the fields for these three test scores so I'm going to create a private I'm going to create a private variable called um, score one score one okay, well, actually, well we, have to, we have to specify the type of it so private int no double because the, the score can be a double right so this, the score can be let's say 78.5 78 and a half 20, uh, 99.5 okay so private double score one double uh, private because I want to hide this variable from code that is outside of this class code in main or code anywhere else I want to hide this variable from code outside this class and I'm and I don't want any code outside this class to be able to see the content of this variable or this field or be t or change the content of this field I want I want code outside of this class to be able to use for example the public methods that, that I'm yet to define in this class to be able to see the content of these fields or to be able to change the content of these fields but directly seeing and directly changing the content of these fields it shouldn't be able to because these fields are going to be are, are basically are private I'm going to define them as private so you understand more of that later on but um, that's why I'm defining it defining it as um, private so I'm going to define all these fields as private as a matter of fact so the first one is going to be private double score one second one is going to be the same thing but score two and then the third one is going to be the same thing that's score three all right so now we're done with the field over here now it says the class should have a constructor accessor and mutator methods for the for the test course fields and a method that returns the average of the test course okay so let's start with the constructor first right because that's what it starts with so the constructor is basically going to once an object is created from this class the constructor is going to initialize the field of that particular object so the constructor is just like a regular method so I'm going to started the keyword public I want it to be public because that's what the, the code outside this class is going to be is going to use to create an object from this class so I want it public I want them to be able, I want code outside this class to be able to use its constructor to, to, um, to create an object from this class so public now the constructor doesn't have a return type because we do not explicitly call this method or call this constructor so therefore we cannot return any uh, it, it, anything so because of that it doesn't have a return type it also doesn't have the the, key, the the keyword static so no keyword static at least in this case so it's just going to be public and then the name of the constructor the name of the constructor has to be the same as the name of the class the, the name of the class in this case is test course right so the name of the constructor has to be also test course so public test course again no return type no static keyword a regular method so the parentheses and everything go with it so the constructor let's just um, in, uh, once we once someone creates an object from this class let's let's just set the default values to to zero 
Okay, so score one. When someone creates an object from this class, um, score one is going to be equal to 0, 0, 0.0 because it's a double. Score two is also going to be equal to 0, 0.0. And then score three is going to be equal to 0, 0.0. So now we're done with the constructor. That's it. Now I like my constructors as the last thing in the class, so I'll just shift them, shift it here, and then everything goes in between here. The next thing we want to go ahead and create is going to be the accessor here. Uh, sorry, accessors. And accessors, accessors is basically going to allow us to view the content of these, or basically allow code outside of this class to be able to view content of these fields here. So the first access I'm going to create is going to be for the field score one. All right, so for that, it's going to be a regular method. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a public method. Now, an, an accessor is going to be a regular method, but it's not going to have um, the keyword static because it's going to be an instance method. An instance method is any method that is going to work directly on the, f the fields of a particular object that is created from this class. And because the instance method is uh, but because this particular method we are going to create to, for example, get the value of these fields work because they are working directly on on, on the fields of these, uh, of because they are working directly on the fields of a particular object which is created from this class, it's an instance method. And instance methods don't have the keyword static. For now, just know that instance instance methods don't have the keyword static. Once we get to chapter eight and future chapters, we're going to talk more about it. But for now, instance methods don't have the keyword static. So they work like a regular method, uh, method anyways. So no, no, um, no keyword static, but then they have return types and then everything else. So public, let's see if this has a return type. What we want to do is basically get the value of this. Once we call this method, we want to be able to return what's stored in score one. So in this case, we know score one is a double. So when, when we say get the, the value of score one, it should return a double, right? So let's, so let's set the return type to a double, and then let's call this method get um get score one yeah get score one right get score one is not going to accept any argument so i'm not going to define any parameters once we call this method all we want it to do is return value of store of score one so once this method is called all we wanted to do is say just return the value of score one that's all that's how it's returning a double Th that's why the return type is a double okay so we're going to do the same thing for the same accesses for score two and score three. Change this to get score two and, and return score two. Change this to get score three and then return score three. So that's what they're going to do. Once these accesses are called, that's what they're going to do. They're going to access the values of these, these individual fields. Now let's go focus on the mutators now. The mutators, are, the mutators, instead of actually getting the values, they're going to set the values of these fields, right? They're going to just set the values. They're also instance, met, uh, instance method, so they don't have the, the, the static keywords. They don't, they don't have it. So the instance methods, or the uh, I mean, for the mutators, okay, these instance methods, the mutator, mutator instance methods, they don't have the keyword static, and they work just like a regular um, method. So I'm going to go ahead and create the first one, which is going to set the value of score one. So public, let's think about it. Is it going to return anything? No, it's all it's doing is it's setting the value of score one. That's it, it's not returning anything. So public void. If it's returning nothing, then it's returning void, okay, which means nothing. So public void, I'm going to call this method set score one. And set score one is going to need the new score that it wants to set score one to. So because of that, it's going to accept an argument. And because it's going to accept an argument, I'm going to go ahead and define a parameter. So the parameter I'm, I'm going to define, I'm going to call it, um, it's going to be a double because it's a score that the, the person, whoever is calling this function is going to pass into this um, this method. Okay, whoever is calling this method is going to pass into, into this method. So public void set score one, it's going to need a double value. Uh, um, so I'm going to go ahead and call it score one given score one given and then once this value has been passed into this method when it's called what we want to do is set the value of score one to be equal to the score one given okay so it's returning nothing this is the name it's going to accept an argument score one given and we are setting the score one field of that particular object to 
let's go one given. Same thing for score two and score three. So change this to set score two. So these are the mutators. So these are all accessors. And we are set, we are creating the mutators now. This is the constructor. Alright, so set score two, it's going to accept score two given and set score two, the score two field to score two given. And then the last is going to be set score three. It's going to accept a score three given sets the score three field to the score three given. So now we have our fields, our accesses, our mutators, and then our constructor over here. Also, the program said we should have a method that returns the average, okay, and a method that returns the average of the test scores. So let's go ahead and create a method for that as well. So that's, it's, going, it's also going to be an instance method, right? So public, no static keyword, public, is it going to return anything? Yes, it said the program should, um, oh wait, it said a method that returns the average of the test scores. So it's going to return the average of the test scores. So average, we know that it can be a double value. So like we can, it, it can be, let's say, 80.5 or 20 point something. It, it can be a, a monetary value with a decimal. So I'm going to define the return type as a double. So public double, I'm going to call this instance method. I'm going to call it um, get average or calculate average. Calculate average here. And calculate average is basically not going to accept anything because it's going to have the values of the fields of this particular object. And it's what, what we want to do actually is, now you can go ahead and define, I mean, you, can, you would think that you, you can go ahead and define a field here called average, where you're going to just store the average in that variable, right? But it's not good practice because once the values of these fields of that particular object changes, then whatever is stored in that average field is, is, is still, it's not needed anymore. It's, you, you don't want that. It's, um, it's going to be no, not used anymore. It's still, it's going to be inaccurate, right? So instead of, instead of defining a field here called average and storing the value in there, okay? Like I said, if, you def if you, the values of these fields changes, then the value stored in average uh, you know, is wrong. So instead of actually creating a variable called average here and then storing the value in here, let's go ahead and just return the result of the, the, result of the calculation directly. So double calculate average is going to re go ahead and return. Now we know it's returning a double, right? So go ahead and return the, the, full, the whole calculation, the, the result of that. So return score one plus score two. And that's how to, to calculate the average. It's the, it's the total or the sum of all the scores, okay? The, the sum of all the scores divided by the, the number of scores. In this case, we have three scores. We add them all together and then we, we divide by three. So score one, score two, plus score three here. And then I want to surround these with parentheses because I want to know the total score of all the scores here. I want them to I want that to take effect first. Divided by three. So return score one score plus score two plus score three divided by three. And that's going to be the average. So we want to return the results directly this way. And then now we're done with this class. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this. Um, that was a previous program. Create a new folder called test scores. Is, is it called test scores or test scores class? Oops, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> that's my WhatsApp um, chat. <laughs> I'm sure some of you are going to read it. Um, all right, let's see. So um, where am I? I wanted to see the actually the question. So test scores class. Okay, so test scores, uh, call it test scores here. All right, so create a folder called um, test scores class and, and then save, it as, save this as test scores. All right, so we have a couple of errors, so let's fix it. Invalid, invalid method declaration, return type required. All right, let's see. This is going to be our constructor, so there shouldn't be any return type required. Let's see here, public test scores, public, hmm, return type required. Oh yeah, so that's why, that's why. Um, remember I mentioned that the name of the constructor has to be the same as the name of the class, right? 
And because of that, it, because the, na the names are not the same, it's not recognizing it as a constructor. It, it's recognizing it as an instance method or a, a, one of the methods in this class. So it wants a it wants the full, it wants it to look like a method, right? But if you it's if it matches, I'm, I'm going to type the S now like this, okay, like that. So if if you add the S here and it matches the name of the class, then it should know that it's a constructor, so it wouldn't complain. So when I compile this, then it's it's done. All right. So now I'm done with the class. We are going to write a, a separate program, like a program set, the question set over here. Then, um, over here, said the, uh, let's see. It said, demonstrate the class by writing a separate program that creates an instance of the class. The program should ask the user to enter three test scores. Yeah. So basically, we are going to write a new program that is going to test this class. This is not a complete program, it's just a class. If you try to run it, you're going to have errors. It's not, it doesn't have a main method, so it's going to tell you. It, it doesn't have a main method. This class doesn't does not have a static void main method except in a string. So it's just a class that another program that has a main method is going to use to write, um, to solve its you know problem. It's just a class. So it's not a complete program, right? So we need, we're going to write another separate program to to use this. So I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, sorry, a new file with a new program in there. So I'm going to go ahead and create the class, a public class. I'll call this test scores. Oops. Um, test. Uh, yeah, I call it. Um, actually, it shouldn't be the name same as. It shouldn't be the same as the name of the class. I will call it test course, test. Okay. Is a, is a, is a program to test the test course class. So, yeah. And I'll go ahead and I'll create the main method. So public static void. Main. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. As long as you save it in the same folder where the test calls class is, like I said, once you compile it, you should be able to see each other. So I'm going to save it here. Then now they're fine. Now the program said that, let me go ahead and copy the question in the previous program here. Oops. <laughs> here. Okay. 